By the end of 1989, Mike Tyson had muscled his way to the top of the heavyweight rankings, with his only legitimate challenger being Evander Holyfield. Their meeting was much anticipated but long overdue, so Tyson signed up to a quick and easy payday against James Buster Douglas, a fighter who'd shown flashes of a potential that had gone unfulfilled. On the 11th of February of 1990, a 23-year-old Mike Tyson was about to enter the ring for the 38th time in his professional career. However, fueled by the passing of his mother, and being put down in the 8th round, Douglas would cause what is considered to be the biggest upset in boxing history. The next UK heavyweight hope of the late 2000s is David Price, who was seen by many at the time to be the favourite against Tyson Fury. After wiping the floor against the domestic competition with Price would pick up notable wins against Matt Skelton and Audley Harrison, Price was the name on all UK fight fans' lips, however Price's domestic rival Tyson Fury could see straight through the hype. So what's your reaction to the Price fight? To be honest, Harrison's the biggest bomb inside boxing, and the reaction to David Price and Frank Maloney calling me out that midget, yeah? I'll fight David Price any day of the week. You see you, you plumber from Liverpool, it's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. He would then put his perfect 15-0 record on the line against the capable Tony Thompson, who was the 12-1 betting underdog with very few giving him the chance of creating the upset. Oh, beautiful shot. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Well, it is all going horribly wrong and I think it's all over. The referee stopped it, Price is out, and it's all gone wrong in the second round. Since beating Chris Beard to win the WBO belt, Vladimir Klitschko had made five successful defences of his title and was ranked number one heavyweight contender by the Ring magazine to then champion Lennox Lewis. After failing to reach agreement with many highly ranked contenders, Klitschko would ultimately face off against Corey Sanders, who was ranked number nine contender by the WBO at the time. Since suffering a knockout loss to Hashim Rahman, Sanders had only fought in a total of three rounds in the intervening years before facing off against Klitschko. After the KG opening two minutes, the fight would explode into action. He's got his knees bent, just lowering his height some more. is about to become the last big bust if he go down again, although the clock is running out on this round. So Vladimir Klitschko is down twice in the opening round against Corey Sanders, and all of Germany holds it back. That's what we all wanted to see, and he has got a lot of adversity to deal with right here. Rachman was able to do in this situation. He was able to come back and knock Sanders out. Now Klitsch goes down a third time, and there are two minutes, 53 seconds to go in this round. And he's not seeing that left hand come. He just cannot see the left hand that Sanders is hitting him with. And he's attacking to try to get out of trouble instead of holding. And this is not going to go well. Another knockdown, the fourth time, and the referee, Gennaro Rodriguez, stops the fight. Badu Jack was the next up and coming super middleweight contender with a perfect professional record of 16 0, headed towards a 168 pound title eliminator before facing off against fringe contender Derek Edwards. He tried to fight the Gambia in the Olympics, that was in 2008. He lost in the first round. And he's oh. dropped to the right hand! Short right hand drops Jack, and he's in trouble. He's in big trouble. Seven! And his legs are still unsteady. Better hold on. I think it's a good idea. Long way to go here. And another right hand drops Jack right on his stomach. Oh, that's it. Should be. I don't think Should so. stop it. No, no. Should that's stop it. it. It's over. Just like that. I guess he got inside. Was I saying something about the amateur experience? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> wow, what a shot.
shocker. Now that <laughs> that's a huge upset here. I'll say. He, he, just, he was in line already for that elimination fight with wow. the And isn't that what you said at the beginning of this show? All he had yeah. to do is not lose here. And everything to lose and not much to gain. And he lost everything tonight, Jerry. David Rodriguez was a fighter who had a blistering come up through the heavyweight ranks through the late 90s and early 2000s. There was a lot of hype surrounding Rodriguez who had a master record of 36-0 with 34 knockouts before he would face off against wisely veteran Darnell Wilson who is best known for scoring the ESPN Knockout of the Year against Emmanuel Nioto. The hype surrounding Rodriguez will finally be put to the test against Darnell Wilson. Body shots by Rodriguez there. That's been his bread and butter so far in this fight. He's leaving his head open when he's uh, winning three and four body shots in a row like that. And the shorter fighter Wilson. Rodriguez needs to keep using that jab on the outside, keep touching Wilson and setting up his big power punches. Got to be careful for the overhand right and the big left hook of Wilson. It's a big and another puncher. right. And a good right there by Wilson. He's got him in trouble here, Kenny. And Wilson has him literally on the ropes right now. In control at the beginning of this round. Wilson lands one big shot. His eyes split open. Has regained control of this round. And is looking at a, a very possible draw in this fight, Kenny. And maybe even a possible knockout. He can catch him again. Rodriguez has never lost. 36-0 in his career. And it's all over. He's this fight's over. over. Wilson has knocked him out. This fight's over. over. Ten seconds left. Darnell Wilson. Wow. In the final round has knocked out Rodriguez with a huge left. And that was what we talked about, Kenny. He's a big puncher. He's always, always capable of doing that. And Darnell Wilson is nobody to take lightly. You cannot, cannot underestimate this guy. Here, we're taking a look at the replay. You see Rodriguez back on the ropes, taking some good shots. And uh, I don't know if I saw and that. This was right after there. it looked like Rodriguez had gained control of the fight once again. But here in the sixth, there it is.